Hi everyone, um, this week I would like to show you how to use Explain Everything, uh, in particular to use it um, for storytelling and for animation. Um, if you've never heard of Explain Everything or you've not used it before, it's a really powerful app. It's extremely versatile, it works across any subjects and it's it's a really great way to be creative. Uh, I particularly like it in terms of PE and science and lots of other great ways and it, it's, it's perfect for maths but in this particular video I just want to focus on using it for storytelling which is great with your younger pupils, uh, EYFS, uh, in Key Stage 1 and even into Key Stage 2 it's got great uses as well. So um, let me try and walk you through how you can use this to get um, some great storytelling opportunities. So if you've not used Explain Everything before, um, there are a few different versions. As you can see in my dock on the bottom, there is a blue, uh, a very dark blue app icon with um, a white E, and this is the Explain Everything version where you subscribe. Um, and as you can see in the second row, just here, um, there is Explain Everything Edu version, which is what most schools that I've been in have. So I'm going to quickly show you how you can use these and I'll give you a little quick overview about exactly what it is. So when you open up Explain Everything you get to the page here where you can create new projects or you can invite people to collaborate or you can share. Um, underneath here is um, all my recent projects and as you can probably work out I use this as my interactive whiteboard so I never actually stand by in front of the classroom. Um, but that is for another video because it has a fantastic use as a presentation tool so I'm just going to go on there click new project and you can get templates you can add files in and all kinds of things but I'm going to go for blank canvas and I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of explain everything so as you can see um, down the side here you have a list of your whiteboard tools so you can copy things um, if you've got the pen that is where you can touch and move things about the screen as long as they're not fixed in place you've got a writing pen with various sizes um, you have highlighters again various sizes and colors and you can change those colors to exact colors of what, what you, you like by going on, on the custom palette and you've got the rubber you can rub out little bits you can rub out part of the photograph behind or you can rub out other parts but basically the rubber fill tool shapes which is why it's great as, a, as an interactive whiteboard tool because it's fantastic for doing things like maths text a cut editor so say I wrote something and it was in the wrong place I can quickly select that I can duplicate it and I can do other things with it that's really really simple um, let me just get rid of those first of all and um, there is the X function so if you put something in you can tap on it and you can delete it straight away there is this fantastic feature which I'm going to talk about in another video for another idea for reading which is um, a laser pointer so if you're demonstrating something you can point to wherever it needs to be and there is the inspector dock which I will come to now the first thing that you notice is it's a blank canvas which is a fantastic tool for, for maths and um, asking children to explain their ideas and basically replacing those times in the classroom where you get your whiteboards out and the pens don't work and uh, nobody likes a dirty whiteboard this is a fantastic way to replace it because if you'll notice on the bottom the red record feature you can record what is happening in real time so you will notice at the top of the screen here there is a plus button this is where we can add things into uh, our presentation. So we can add in recent files that I've already added in, explain everything. I can add a placeholder, I can add audio that I might have saved on, um, on my iPad. I can add in clip art, I can add an image from the web, a file that I might have, which is the way I use it. I add files, um, I make all my resources in Keynote and import them here. Or I can add an existing image or video from my camera roll. Now at the moment, I don't actually have anything in my camera roll that I would like to use. But I want my, say for in this example, I want to retell the Gruffalo. So what we're going to do is we are going to go out of Expo Everything into Safari and we are going to type in Gruffalo Woods. And if we hit the images button, we should be able to find a background of Gruffalo Woods. So I'm just going to hold my finger down. I'm going to save that image. And what else I would like in my 
animation is I would like the mouse. So I'm going to go for Gruffalo Mouse. Search that mouse. I'm going to hit images again. And you can see there are several images there. Some of them really good. But uh, for my particular um, image, I'm going to type in PNG afterwards. Now, the reason that I type in PNG is the majority of PNG um, saved images don't have a background. So, some of them do, some of them don't. You can generally tell, like the fox here, anything that's got a squared background means that it doesn't have a background image. When you insert it on anything, you will only have the outline of the shape. So, I'm going to go for, let's have a look, just save that one. Now, I'm not entirely sure if it's saved or not, but I'm just going to save it. It might have a, it might have a white background, it might not, but that's fine, that's no problem. So now that I've got my images that I want to use in the first part of my animation, I'm just going to quickly jump back into explain everything, and I am going to add these in. So I'm just going to add the images in by going to add, I'm going to go to the existing image, I'm going to go to my camera roll, and this is where it will probably, there it is, I'm going to hit that, that's my image there. You can see those little checks again in the background. Um, I want to stretch that all the way to my screen. Now, I can still move it with my finger if I'm not happy with it. I can pinch it, I can make it smaller. You'll notice tools down the side here where I can rotate it 90 degrees to get it perfectly straight. I could crop it, I could draw around it to crop out bits that I want. But for this particular one, I'm just going to the top right hand corner and I'm going to hit done. Now that is my background. But what you will notice is, as I am on the finger tool here, I can still move that image around and I don't want to move that image around. Because any little fingers that are trying to retell the story and knock that image are going to move it ever so slightly or move it a long way. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go down to the bottom of this toolbar where there is a, 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 an eye inside a square and this is the inspector icon. Now what I can do here is I can effectively edit any images or objects or text that I put into an explain everything presentation. So first thing you'll notice is it comes up with a range of options, arrange, edit, lock. But none of these options with the option of paste are actually highlighted for me to select and that's because I haven't highlighted the picture. So once I tap on the image you will notice that there is a blue and white little check line all the way around the outside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit and halfway down, well near the bottom of edit, set as background. So now if I come out of there and I hit the finger again, nothing moves on that particular one. So my background is set. I'm all completely and utterly set and ready to record. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to add in of course good old mouse. So I'm going to hit add. I'm going to go to the existing image and video again. I'm going to tap on moments and I'm going to choose the mouse. And what you'll notice is mouse there, he, um, he doesn't have one of those squared backgrounds, one of those dotty backgrounds. So what I could do is I could very carefully go to the, the freehand cutting tool and I could draw all the way around the mouse. As carefully as I can. It does take a bit of time, which is why, especially if you work with younger children, it's a good idea to have this already set up. And I'm not very good at going on the outline, so I can't always get it as perfect as I'd like to. But once I hit apply, it takes the background out, and I have a little mouse there. Okay, so you can see my mouse there, I can place them wherever I like and my mouse is ready to go. So, I've set up uh, the scene, if you will. So I've got my puppets in there. I've got my backdrop in there. The, the next thing that is left to do is, uh, is to record. So, let's get record. Now, just in case you're, you don't have an Apple Pencil or a crayon or a good stylus or you're not great at cutting up with your finger, another good way to do it is um, if you search Gruffalo Mouse and if you have a look along the top, there are generally a couple of things that help you um, help you work out a 
extra options of finding them. So you've got animated ones, you've got transparent ones, cartoon, etc. And these little bars just above the pictures. If you hit the transparent one, what that should mean is that when you come to tap on it, you can see there it's got the grey and white checks and that one will be transparent. So I'm just going to save that one as well. Save that image. And I'm going to go back in to explain everything now. And there's my mouse with a little bit of white on that didn't quite work out. So I'm just going to show you how you can add the ones in that are clear. And there he is, you can see. He's got totally no background at all. He's exact, he's, he's a bit, maybe the wrong way around and maybe that's not what I, what I quite want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the X and I'm going to delete the one that I've drawn around. Because I think this one's indeed there. And I'm going to hit the, the, the eye, the inspector again. I'm going to tap on that mouse. And now when I come to uh, edit, I can flip him left or right and I can get him whichever way that I, I want him to go. So I've got him there. Click off. I'm going to set him back over here and I'm just going to spin him and make him a little bit smaller. Now also, what, I, what, is, the mouse looks, what is, is the mouse looking for? As we all know, when the mouse is going through the deep dark wood, he is looking for a nut. Now that we're all set up, it's time for the recording and the fun part for your students and your children. And before I start recording and hitting that red button on the bottom, I need to make sure that on the left, on the toolbar, I have selected the finger pointer so I can move the mouse. And here we go. The mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. The mouse saw a nut. Now, when I press stop, I get a list of options here. And what you can see is there are two bars. And the bar on the bottom is the sound bar. That's my voice speaking. And the bar on the top is the pointer or the pen or anything else that is going on on that screen. So if I needed to edit or anything like that, or I need to speed it up or slow it down, there is a lot of options on the top. So I can tap on that, I could hit delete. Um, with the arrow and that would delete everything after it I could just hold my finger down on one bar and I could split it or I could delete it all from here and I think I'm pretty happy with that so what I'm going to do is just next to the red record uh, bar where it's got the, the blue bit in the arrow I'm going to tap that arrow and take that bar away and I'm just going to rewatch it mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood mouse saw a nut and the nut looked good I'm happy with that, I'm ready to go. I can go on to the next one. Now, what I like to do with, with, with my class and, uh, and, and the kids in my school is I like to have these already made, prior made. So what I do is I hit add and I add the pages. So if I tap on the two of two, I would have a series of scenes already set up here with all of the puppets on each screen. And very simply, I could start recording and when the children are ready, they could hit record. They could record one slide at a time, they could skip to the next slide, they can do all of those things. Now when it comes to me trying to share this with my class, quite simply what I do is, in the top corner, just where it says invite, there is an arrow next to it, share arrow, I export it. I export it as a project which allows them to um, go in and edit it and put their own stamp on it. And I would airdrop it to the kids in my class or... Um, I would put it into something like Google Classroom or any way that I share my apps. Now, what else I would do is after I've finished, I'm just going to quite simply hit export. Now that I've saved it, export, um, I want to save it as a video so I can see all of that storytelling. And this time I'm going to save the video to my camera roll. And that is perfectly ready to go for something like Seesaw. So as you can see, this is really, really simple to use. It just requires you taking maybe 5-10 minutes to build up some scenes to add in the puppets or the characters and the objects that you want in there and then you're ready to go. So simple, so easy, so effective. Let me know what you think. Um, it has a range of uses, it doesn't just have to be for earlier down in school. Great for comics, great for all kinds of things for bringing comics to life, but it really is a great way of creating very simple, easy animations and perfect for storytelling and reciting. Um, things like talk writing and other things. So I hope that's good. 